Hey, what's up, guys? You're listening to the Airtime Misfits Podcast. I'm your host, Adam, alongside Nick. How's it going? And you guys know that you can always count on us to do a countdown. Mm. We're going to be counting down our favorite defunct roller coasters. Yes, that's right. We're going to do our top five today. And then in the next episode, we'll be counting down the top five ones that we wish we would have written. Yeah. So this yes. is going to be a two-parter and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So stick around. been a it's been a daunting task for me to come up with my top five (laughs) right although i've not had uh as much of an extensive of a list as i had hoped for uh, of the of defunct coasters oh yeah me Um, too yeah it was hard for me because i kind of went through the coasters that i've been on that that are now defunct mm -hmm. and i mostly realized that there's a lot that i didn't go on yes i wish i did and I'm yes. sure I'm missing some. I'm sure I'm going to miss some. I'm forgetting about some mm-hmm. because there's the defunct coaster that. So there's like kind of two types. There's uh, one, a coaster that was removed completely and is gone or two, a coaster that has been reimagined like an RMC coaster mm-hmm. or a floorless converted to a no, sorry, a stand up converted to a floorless. So or relocated coasters. or relocated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. That counts, too. So with that. My, What's your number my, five? My number five is one of the first RMC conversions of all time, and that's Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, oh, Texas. Okay, yeah, yes, that, that's one that I never got to ride, but seeing the photos of it, I would have loved to have uh, been on that one. It yes, it is. Uh, it was incredibly painful. Um, <laughs> just an absolute jackhammer. Um, that was it, its reputation. Yes. Yes. It makes me, um, I, I wrote, so the one that it makes me think of the most, cause the, the, the layout is so unique. Mm-hmm. Um, it really just works with the Corey wall really yeah, well. It looks um, awesome. Yes. Um, and I could never really akin it or like compare it to anything else that I've ridden until I wrote the boss at six Flags St. Louis last year. Um, in that it's just massive, yeah, it's it, it's really like accompanying to the terrain around it mm-hmm. and just a really I loved it because it was so unique. And I remember living in Texas for a short time when I was growing up and it was just kind of the like, you know, down in Texas, we didn't have, you know, a Millennium Force or anything like that mm-hmm. to kind of just oogle at for a while. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it. It was that. And, uh, you know. Krypton, Superman, Krypton coaster. Right. Um, those were the two really cool ones. I've seen a video of Rattler on YouTube where, yeah. where uh, it was like swaying. Oh yeah, the coaster train would would go by, and I I know that coaster before it was completely um, reimagined into Iron Rattler. Mm-hmm. They uh, modified the first drop, right? So it didn't yeah. go down as far, and uh, I think. I think that was after like the infamous video of like the coaster swaying like pretty violently. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It so first of all, the, the the company that made it is Roller Coaster Corporation of America. Uh, okay. uh, can you name can you name anything that they've built? No, no, I, I can't either. <laughs> no. And that's because they have only built five in the world. So uh. <laughs> and all of the others are not in America. Okay, so yeah. Uh, one of those companies that it is you know shot in the dark probably when they Uh when they built it like let's give it a shot see how it goes so probably there were some engineering oversights um however i will say and i know you'd probably agree with me iron rattler is by far one of the best rmc conversions oh yeah i think so too it's probably my favorite first drop of any rmc coaster a hundred percent yes yes Mm -hmm. um it's it's uh, iron rattler is one of those examples of taking a defunct coaster, reimagining it, redoing it, and really making it truly better without any 
I have no complaints about it. Like no, I don't, awesome. I, 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 I can't think of a single critique because it's just been so well done. Yeah. It's um, great. But yeah, that's my number five. What, that's uh, a good one. Yeah. What's, what's your number five. Okay. At? Number five for me is a coaster at Canada's wonderland. And that coaster Ooh. is called sky rider. Ah, oh, never got to write that. This, this was a Togo stand-up coaster. Mm -hmm. It was the first Togo stand-up coaster that I rode on. And I, I believe there are no more of those left in the U United States. Nope, there's none. Um, there was, uh, there was one at King's Dominion called Shockwave. There was Skyrider at Candace Wonderland. And then there was Python. King Cobra. No, King, King Cobra, Cobra yeah. at King's Island. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so Skyrider, it opened in 1985. It closed in 2014. I wrote it in probably like 2012. I thought it was actually pretty fun. And I was, I was not expecting to like it because I knew it was an older coaster and I knew it was a stand up coaster, which I'm typically not a fan of. But sure. I was actually pretty surprised at how much I sort of enjoyed the ride. If you haven't been on a Togo stand up coaster, you should do yourself a favor, Google Togo stand up coaster and take a look at the trains, take a look mm -hmm. at the seats because. Like if you think a B and M a stand up coaster train is uncomfortable or looks uncomfortable, the Togo one like it looks like a Walmart version of that. Yes. <laughs> like it, yes. It's, it's basically a bicycle seat with this harness that you kind of put on like a vest. Like yeah, a, like yeah. you stick your arms in it instead. Of like coming, you're about ready to jump out of a plane. Right. Instead of yeah. it coming down over your shoulders, it kind of comes and from the sides yeah, yeah yeah it's weird but it was a cool experience they removed that uh to put in yukon striker yes yes mm -hmm. and it, yeah so it wasn't like back-to-back -back years but anyways they removed it in 2014 and then now we have yukon striker in its place yeah and i really wish i've written a togo stand-up but i have not yeah i've um, been on i've been on two I've been on Shockwave at King's Dominion and Skyrider at Canada's Wonderland. Oh man, see, yeah, as a as a stand up coaster uh, aficionado, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm ashamed that I haven't written anything like I that. I know, yeah, Ugh, man, that's okay. Which, yeah, yeah, you have to go yeah. over to to Europe or Asia to ride one. Yes. Because, well, I think Shockwave that was at King's Dominion that was sold, and I think that still stands somewhere in Europe or Asia. I can't remember where. I don't know what happened to Skyrider. Yeah, I feel like they're both in Asia because Togo's an Asian company yeah. out of Japan. Is that right? Possibly. Um, okay, I believe Japan. Um, but Skyrider, well, let's see here. Togo, yeah, Japan. Um, so Skyrider is now in Italy. Oh, okay. At, known let's, as Freestyle. Let's go. Hey. Italy, <laughs> we're coming for you. Oh, it's yeah. got a nice paint job now too. Is it? It's uh, pretty yeah. bright now, isn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, it makes me think of Steel Eel. Yeah. Um, yep. Cool. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay, what's your number four? Man, this was a tough one because yeah. it was kind of like a three-way tie. Because number five, Rattler, just for the novelty of it, it wasn't an actually good mm -hmm. one, but four could go several ways. Uh, number four for me has got to be Top Thrill Dragster. And uh, my biggest gripe for it, um, and the reason that it's so low on my list, and I know you and I have talked about this at length, but it's such a short ride. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It it never, to me, justified the length of the line. Um, no. Like, ride it once for sure. Like, mm -hmm. if, you were, if you were at Cedar Point, you had to ride it one time just for the experience. But uh, I tend to not like the super intense coasters anyway. So to wait in a line and experience that intensity for 15 seconds and then be done. It was just, it was fun, but also not worth it. Yeah. I think it was definitely worth it. You know, the, the very first time you wrote, I wrote it anyways, because I've never experienced anything like that. So I did wait like the three and a half hours to write it and it was completely worth it. Sure. And then every time I went to Cedar point, if the coaster is open, Right, which was the thing, yeah. I was always up for riding it if the line wasn't too long mm -hmm. because it got to the point where, you know, I had been on it so many times that waiting 45 minutes for a 15-second ride just wasn't worth it to me mm -hmm. anymore. 
No. But I always, I mean, it's an awesome ride. It's like uh, 15 seconds of like pure adrenaline rush. So right. I think it's, I mean, obviously for sure, an iconic coaster for multiple reasons. Um, and I always liked riding it. But yeah, it got to the point towards the end where if it was like 20 minutes or less, I would ride it basically. Yes. yes. Or I would just walk past. Yeah. At the end of the day, like if someone said, hey, you know, to my 10 year old self, you can ride this one time and never ride it again. Like looking back, I would have been like, okay, with that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I am very curious to see what Cedar Point does with a uh, top yeah. load dragster. It seems obvious that they're replacing the launch system, but yeah. beyond that, uh, we, I'm excited to see what they do. Cause I'm assuming it's going to be more than just that. I hope anyways, but I hope so. Mm-hmm. I really do. Cause there, there's so much potential with that thing. It's just yeah. gotta be, it's just gotta be updated. That's all. Yeah. 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 We will mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number four for me is Shockwave at Six Flags ah. Great America. Ooh, okay. Have you been on this one? No, going old school. I was a little bit before my time. Yeah. So Shockwave was uh, opened in 1988, closed in 2002. It was an arrow. I will say this for Shockwave. I hated it every time I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, I could see but that. But I have like kind of a nostalgic uh love for it as well because that coaster i don't know it's like because every time i wrote it i about blacked out mm-hmm. because it was so intense mm-hmm. and if if you don't know what shockwave looks like look it up on google because it's like the inversions on this thing are so crazy looking mm-hmm. uh you can see uh viper at six flags magic mountain is actually I think it might be a mirror clone. Yeah. But, and then a great American screen machine is somehow thrown in that mix as well. Yeah, so, yep. And that's another defunct one, but it was just so uh, tall and fast and it had like six or seven inversions and the, uh, the vertical loops are so like small and tight and compact. Like every time I'd go through the inversion and there's like three of them in a row, three loops in a row. I would mm-hmm. like, Yeah. I would gray out most of the the ride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I could totally see that because I I know I've ridden Viper. That's the only one that's kind of like that. Uh It's it's too much. Those those uh, I think they call them mega loopers. Yeah. Like arrow (laughs) mega loopers It is way too much. And it's such such a like late 80s, early 90s thing to call it a mega looper. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Yeah. Uh uh, I love that. Um. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in Shockwave, be sure to check out our episode we did with Josh from uh, Made to Thrill. Oh, yeah. And yep. uh, he he goes in depth about his experience with Shockwave. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like one of those coasters that I didn't like at all, but I have so many like memories of it that it's kind of like burned into my coaster DNA. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know? I've had plenty of those. Mm-hmm. OK, what's your number three? Uh, oh, man. Um, going. Uh, with another Cedar Point one, Disaster Transport. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was by no means like for the thrill factor, but m- I, f- purely for the theming, mm-hmm. honestly. Oh, yeah. Because I'm a sucker for theming, as I know you are as well. Yep. Um, plus dark rides, which mm-hmm. is also great. Yeah. Um, so it kind of gave you the best of both worlds, just in the most confusing way possible. Uh, th- there were like 13 different storylines going on with disaster transport <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, it was never kind of overlapping in any way it was never cohesive <laughs> yeah it was just kind of like hey you're going to space and then you got off and at one point during its time like uh you know the staff would say like welcome to alaska uh-huh. <laughs> and that's a whole thing you know yeah, but uh-huh. uh i just loved it because i remember being like six years old riding it and just thinking like wow i've not ever been on anything like this <laughs> right <laughs> so, yeah uh-huh i always yeah. liked riding it was a, when i was a kid yeah yeah it's it was just one of those fun memories uh-huh. um for me more than anything i just i i think i rank it uh because of the nostalgia factor so. oh absolutely and that that goes a long way with me and coasters and nostalgia yeah. oh yeah yeah for sure okay number three for me is a volcano Ooh, at, see at king's dominion mm-hmm. and never got to ride it yeah, Volcano opened in 1998, closed mm-hmm. in 2018. It was an Inamin mm-hmm. poster. What I liked most about Volcano is how unique it was. 
blasting through the volcano. I think at the time when it opened and for a long time, you know, the very top of that coming out of the volcano was the tallest inversion in the country or the world. Yeah. I can't remember. It's one of those. Yeah, I, yeah. definitely the country. Mm hmm. But the coaster was so unique, like there's nothing else like it anywhere that I can think of that's even close to like the theming and mm -hmm. the, the story of the ride and everything. Um, so while the coaster ride itself, other than the launch, is a little underwhelming, like it's fun, but it's like nothing crazy. But the, the initial launch coming out of the volcano, the theming, the just this massive mountain and everything like the, the whole package of the ride was really cool. It's like a really unique experience for a coaster enthusiast i think so mm -hmm. like I, yeah i was really happy that i got to ride it before they took it down which was a, a shock to a lot of people because it was yeah probably one of the most popular coasters at that park oh definitely and i know a lot of people were bummed when king's dominion announced that they were removing it i would assume they're going to add another coaster in its place at some point yeah the way that they're retheming that whole section to i believe like a safari theme is that correct mm -hmm. it's something it's something like jungle that. expedition jungle expedition that's yeah. why and yeah. they just added tumbly mm -hmm. back there which, which people are not happy about and i no. get it it's 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 just filler yeah. um i think it's but, a it's a good uh yeah filler coaster basically yeah it, it's like Cedar Point adding a, a spinning wild mouse. Right, you know, yeah. it's it's not meant to be this big all, uh, marquee attraction. No, it's um, just kind of a filler coaster. And right, yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, I, I, to me, I think that was indicative of them paving the way for a, you know, to complement whatever takes Volcano's place. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. to kind yeah, of draw it's attention like, back. Yep, yeah, it's going to be a kind of a total area retheme over, mm -hmm. and it's going to yeah be a six seven year project oh and, yeah yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh because there's even sorry there's even rumors of like flight of fear being uh -huh. rethemed uh intimidator 305 being rethemed to all be a part of the jungle expedition area jeez that's crazy that i wouldn't be against that no i think and, i think that'd be cool and anaconda is in that area as well and that already kind of goes with the theme yeah but if, if they don't remove that uh-huh yeah it's, it's probably near it's and it's got to be it's yeah. so rough mm -hmm. um but yeah because aren't aren't they even renaming avalanche or am i making that yeah up? They, okay. they had already renamed that to reptilian i think it's called now oh, that's right that's right yeah reptilian, so the, something like that yeah something like that it got it got that kind of jungle retheme though but the whole area because i went to king's dominion this summer and the whole area looks great mm -hmm. um yeah 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 I'm and sure. you can tell it's it's kind of like uh, a work in progress as far as expansion, but what they've done so far looks amazing. Yeah, I I remember I went in 2019 and that was right after, uh, you know, obviously right after they announced that Volcano wasn't going to come back mm -hmm. and they were in the process of tearing it down. And that whole section of the park was just an eyesore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they had some flat rides that just hadn't been operating. They mm -hmm. had the volcano that was being torn down. So I'm glad that they're giving it new life and yeah. really kind of trying to, I think, keep the legacy of volcano going mm -hmm. and that whole theme and like really just kind of build yeah. a, a story around that section of the park. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. Number two, um, this one is, is special to me, very near and dear to my heart. Um, Firehawk slash X Flight. Uh, it's you know I I grew up with X Flight at Geauga Lake and uh, saw it meet its gruesome demise as, mm -hmm. as Firehawk, you know. And uh, there's just something unique about a Vacoma Flying Dutchman. It's yeah. not the most comfortable experience. But to me, Firehawk was definitely like the best maintained. It, it just felt the smoothest of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it, it, you know, back in 2001, that was a crazy experience. Being oh, able yeah. to like simulate flying. For sure. Yeah. Nuts. It was uh -huh. crazy. Um, so again, for the nostalgia factor and for the uniqueness factor, I think Firehawk really was just a cool coaster oh yeah especially uh you're for a younger kid at the time or oh at yeah. the time you know there wasn't any other really flying coasters around 
the idea of flying to like 11 or 12 year old or 10 year old or however oh. old, you know, you are at the time, like, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, we had POVs and things like that. You could mm-hmm. watch yeah, it, you know, we didn't have YouTube, but like yeah. back then we could do some searching and like simulate the flying experience, so to speak. But this was the first real, like, Oh, this is what it would be uh-huh. like from this vantage point. Yep. So super cool. Yeah. And it was removed and now it's replaced with Orion. Yep. Which is a very solid addition to the park. Mm -hmm. I am sad that Firehawk's not there, but I understand that things have to move forward. And Orion just made sense for Kings Island. Yeah. So those flying Dutchmen, I I think they uh, weren't the fastest as far as loading and unloading. No, so the capacity per hour wasn't great. There was some down, yeah, significant downtime with those. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, so multiple reasons why it closed. You can still find some Flying Dutchman around the country, though. Yeah, like I, I know Six Flags America has one and, and Night, Nighthawk at Carowinds. Yep, which, which has been, it's finally back open, but that was down yeah. for a while, a and, year or so, and it has by far the slowest operate and that's no that's not human error that's just the coaster it's yeah the Mm -hmm. operations are so slow on that one yeah yeah it's a it's a process yeah to Mm -hmm. get in and get out yeah number two for me yes this is another stand-up coaster i have two stand-up coasters on my list this is iron wolf Ooh. located at six flags great america okay uh now iron wolf opened in 1990 as the first b&m stand-up coaster Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the first time I wrote it was probably 93, 94. So not, you know, not the first year it opened or the first few years, but it was my first stand-up coaster experience. Just much like you with the flying coaster, me riding a stand-up coaster for the first time, the idea of it was so cool and crazy. Like it, it blew my little mind at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I've never been the biggest fan of stand-up coasters just because they've always been kind of uncomfortable for me and uncomfortable ride. Like I always kind of, the pressure of my legs kind of hurt and obviously the crushing of the, the nads, the nads, not fun, but Mm -hmm. I always thought iron wolf was the most comfortable of the stand-up coasters. And I think part of the reason is because similar to Georgia scorcher, uh, which funny enough is like the last built stand-up BM coaster until pipeline opens. Yes. At SeaWorld. Yes. Uh, but I think Georgia Scorcher, they kind of, they saw, you know, all these different versions of the stand-up coaster, like Mantis, Green Lantern, you know, where they kind of went in uh, Riddler's Revenge, where they kept going taller, faster, more inversions. And I don't think that necessarily works great for the stand-up coaster. It doesn't. And that's what they've figured out for Pipeline, if you look exactly. at the layout. It's yes. going to, Yeah. So with Iron Wolf, it was it was not very tall. It only had two, maybe three inversions. I can't re- remember, but much like mm-hmm. Georgia Scorcher, it was um, smaller. It wasn't as fast. It had fewer inversions, and it made the the coaster ride much more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they removed it though in 2011, and now that's where Goliath stands, which is mm-hmm. the first ground up built RMC coaster. Yes, they reuse Iron Wolf's station, so you can. There's still a little piece of history there at Six Flags with Iron Wolf Station. Uh, Iron Wolf was moved to Six Flags America as Apocalypse, mm-hmm. which which is a stand-up coaster still, and then later re um, reimagined as Firebird, which is uh, now a floorless coaster. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Iron Wolf, and I always love the name. I always yeah. love the logo. Is very kind of '90s looking. Yeah, it's it's and it's pretty badass. Like I could see a biker gang being called the Iron Wolves. Oh you hell know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! All right, time for number one. Um, rather than me say it, Adam, what it what's my number one? This is a no brainer. If uh-huh. any of you know Nick or have listened to this, you know mm-hmm. that his number one is Wildcat. At Cedar yes. Point. <laughs> yes, Wildcat at Cedar he's Point. A, he's a, a mouse coaster enthusiast. I am, yes. Uh I no. I only ride mouse coasters from here on out. <laughs> no, it's it's obvious it's Mantis. Uh-huh. Nick uh, is, is the biggest fantas of Mantis. The biggest fantas of Mantis. He probably uh, owns every piece of merchandise that was ever made for Mantis. Plus, yep. he's created his own Mantis merchandise mm-hmm. with the help of me sometimes. <laughs> 
Yes, with the help of Adam. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for a period of time there, we were even selling some Mantis the merchandise right. yeah. in the form of a candle. <laughs> yeah. And if but, you if you snoozed, you lose on that yeah. one. But some I know like some of my favorite pieces you have of the Mantis uh, like merchandise is like actually stuff that you recreated, like the height checker sign uh-huh. that you had uh, recreated. Mm-hmm. So those of you who are not familiar, Cedar Point back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, maybe early 2000s, maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nick's showing me right now on the camera. Oh, yeah. So cool. It's yeah. super cool. So they used to have like each coaster had like its own unique individual uh, ride height. What are they called? Ride height? Check? Uh, yeah, like um, height sticks or something mm-hmm. like that. So basically you would to check to see if you're tall enough to ride the coaster. Yeah. But they each coaster had a, a, its own unique one. The Mantis one was super cool. It had like this cool Mantis looking character. Mm-hmm. Nick had it recreated life size or yes. close to life size for close. his house. Yeah. 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 But you have every mug, you have every shirt, you have the oh, Banshee it's... stuff when Mantis was originally called Banshee briefly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Got I've got it all. And uh it's uh it's definitely a, a weird kind of niche thing to be into. But <laughs> if you've listened to the podcast before, it's just got a soft spot in my heart because uh when i was at the time i was getting ready to move to ohio i was living in hawaii and uh i had a cousin who sold cedar point tickets and at the time uh, mantis was the newest coaster at the park and it was just kind of the the, you know the biggest baddest whatever at the time um and so i just kind of clung to it loved the color scheme loved Mm -hmm. the uh the name i loved the imagery I loved the idea of standing up on a coaster that was so new to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I understand that it was not a comfortable experience. I definitely (laughs) passed out on it more than once, Um, (laughs) but I love it. And I always will. And, and Rougarou, uh, Adam and I have had some great rides on Rougarou recently. Yeah. It's a, it's a solid coaster. I like Rougarou a lot. Yeah. Yeah. People hate on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's great. I do Uh, too. Yeah. Right in that front row. It's like you're, I mean, like it with any floorless coaster, it's Uh nothing special, but like, it's like you're on the top of the track yeah. and it's just a, it's still a good ride. It holds up, I think. Yeah. I I always loved the Mantis color scheme. I always loved the logo, the imagery of it and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And when it first opened in 96, like I thought it was awesome, you know, standing up on a coaster was cool. And then B&M, I think they kind of took what Togo had done and and improved the standing up coaster experience. Mm-hmm. yeah i have great memories of mantis as the years went on though i kind of stopped writing it because it got too uncomfortable for me it, yep. like leg and i always you know you try to figure out all the different tricks oh like, yeah you hear yeah. the tips like oh you got to ride it with your legs perfectly straight mm-hmm. and then someone will say no you have to bend your knees and like nothing really worked for me right <laughs> so i yeah. i was pleased when they converted it to the floorless coaster yeah because I, I think it's a cool layout Yes, it and, is. A, it's a great layout. I yeah, think. I, I agree. And I think, you know, now being seated, I think I actually it's probably, you know, one of my top six, seven favorite coasters at Cedar Point, which is, you know, that's saying it's my sixth or seventh favorite at Cedar Point may sound lame. But when you think about all the great coasters they have, it's a high compliment. Yeah. Like I'd yeah. rather ride Rougarou than Val Raven. Yes. A hundred percent. And hundred percent. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's one of the uh yeah. I don't I was gonna not it's not one of the better coasters at Cedar Point, but it's definitely not near the bottom of the list for me. It's it I like it more than probably most people like it at the park. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's it's like I'd probably uh, even rather write it than like Gatekeeper. I think Rugaru oh, is probably yeah. more fun. Yeah. It's it's paced really well for a sit-down coaster, and that kind of yeah. leads back to what you said, like B and M over the years now proven with pipeline like they've figured out mm-hmm. okay this is the right formula to make a stand-up yep. coaster not terrible and um i'm glad that they've converted some of their old stand-ups because it makes it much better yeah. um but i'm really excited to check out this new concept with the surf coaster so yeah pipelines gonna be very interesting especially the their new technology they have with the trains now where the seats are kind of like on shock absorbers so yes yeah I think that's going to solve a lot of the issues with the leg pain, leg cramping. Mm-hmm. Cause it, it felt like to me, like uh, I was getting like Charlie horses on my legs. Like someone is yes. punching my thighs the whole, 
like my yes. big brother was punching my thigh the whole ride. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Come on, Mark. Stop yeah. Punching at him. So I think uh, I think pipelines are going to be a much improved experience. Plus the layout of the coaster. I think they kind of extended it more instead of having all these Titan versions back to back to back. It's going to be more flowy. It's going to be, yeah, you know, yeah I think it's going to be a, a good, good addition for that park. And it might revive the stand up coaster. It uh, might. I wouldn't mind, especially if it's a comfortable ride, like to see more of these stand up coasters show up at, at parks. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Um, like someone should do a skateboard theme one. If yes. world has got the surfing, someone should do a like skateboard. Yeah, cool. like out, out at Magic Mountain. Oh, yeah. Like something skatey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, love uh, that, like the area back where, um, what's that? Uh, West Coast Racers is. It's kind oh, of that'd like be perfect. Yeah. It's kind of got this like urban, like graffiti, like, yeah, punk, yeah. badass feel back there. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. put a skateboard coaster <sighs> back there. <laughs> I could see it. I would it's love very, that. it'd be very Six Flags for them to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do something kind of edgy yeah, yeah i don't know that. anyways yeah i'm i'm curious to check out pipeline i think it, it could be pretty cool i'm willing to give the stand-up coaster another chance yes it is definitely looking promising so yes. adam your your number one what yes. do we got this is my number one favorite defunct coaster that i have ridden and the main reason is nostalgia mm-hmm. and that coaster is disaster transport at cedar point ah uh, yes I knew it was coming. Yeah. And the the older I get, the more and more I love this coaster. Yes. And, and the more fondness I have for it. Now, Magnum is my all time favorite roller coaster mm-hmm. for many reasons, mostly nostalgia. Like it's the first big coaster that I can remember riding. Like I have all these memories attached to it, like with my family and lots of reasons. Disaster Transport, I'm finding is kind of the same way to me because when i think of growing up and i think of going to cedar point because we went every summer the two coasters i think of the most are magnum first and then disaster transport Mm -hmm. and just much like you i always loved the theming i always loved the indoor queue with the robots and yeah and each kind of uh, area where there was a queue you kind of went into a couple different rooms and there was Especially in the beginning now, because as the years went on, the theming kind of faded a bit. Yeah. Big but time. early, early on, it was it was always very cool. And mm-hmm. um, I always loved the coaster experience. Now, b- prior to Disaster Transport, this coaster opened in 1985 as Avalanche Run mm-hmm. bobsled coaster, which was outdoors. They were and it was right on the beach. And funny enough the wind blows across lake erie which is yeah. weird you wouldn't expect yeah. the wind right. to blow across the lake and right. it was blowing sand onto the the bobsled track a little bit of an oversight on cedar points part. <laughs> yeah yeah so they're like well this isn't gonna work out what do we do i know let's put a big ugly building over this coaster yes and building... say have, have sand still get in through the cracks but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the building was a bit of an eyesore and you know they tried to theme it and at the time they were trying to kind of copy what uh, Disney did with um, Space Mountain. This mm-hmm. was like a poor man's version of Space Mountain, basically. But anyways, uh, so it was a bob- bobsled coaster in the dark. It was kind of a short coaster experience. Like once like lift hill to the fin- finish, it felt like a minute. Like it was not very long. Yeah, yeah. But it was like pitch black most of the ride. It, it wasn't too scary because, you know, the first time I rode it, it was I was probably, you know, seven, eight years old riding with my parents and uh the scariest part about it was riding it in the dark Mm -hmm. and uh, but i always loved it and like i have so many great memories riding with my family and um you know it was sad to see as the years went on you could kind of tell that the coaster was becoming more and more forgotten and you could see the end was near Mm -hmm. and then um you know, when they finally announced that it was closing, it was mixed feelings for me at the time. You know, I didn't realize how much I actually loved the coaster. Sure. You we know? were just excited for what was next. Exactly. Yeah. And which is Gatekeeper now, which mm-hmm. I do like Gatekeeper. And I think it is an improvement to the park. That area, the, the park looks better by the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why they did it. They had to do it. But as the years went on, I started to really appreciate and miss disaster transport more and more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so for those reasons it's my number one favorite defunct coaster that i have ridden mostly mm-hmm. because of nostalgic reasons yeah but i would love to be able to ride it one more time 
Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I feel that man. <laughs> yeah. And I think and it's a big reason why we started airtime misfits is the nostalgia. We want to relive it. We want to talk about it. We want to yep. feel it. Um, exactly. And that's, you know, I'm excited to next time talk about uh, the top five coasters. We wish we had written that we missed like, out on. Yeah. Cause yeah, there's so that, many, there are oh, so many. Yeah. I, I could, I could do it. Um, we might as well do a top 10 or 15 because I could just <laughs> no. go on and on. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm sure I missed some or forgot about some on list on this list. So after we're done, I'll probably be like, oh, I forgot about that when that would have been yep. in my top five, because there's so many. If you think about yeah, you know, all these coasters that are have been converted by RMC. I agree. And uh, so be sure to stick around and 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 watch for our next episode where we talk about the things we'd look at on the Internet and wish we could ride, but never yeah. got to. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you want down the comment section, let us know if we have missed any that you think, you know, should be on the list. Of course, we haven't been on all of them. So if you're thinking of, say, Son of Beast, mm -hmm. we haven't. Probably, been we've never been on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because there's some pretty infamous defunct coasters. Actually, I'll name a couple honorable mentions. Vortex mm -hmm. at King's oh, Island. Yep, yep. Much. It's pretty similar to Shockwave at Six Flags Great America they're built around the same time uh you know that that narrowly missed my list not that i liked the ride but i think it was a cool looking ride and i always um you know very thought, very photogenic yes and i yeah. always appreciated that for it but i didn't really have any nostalgic feelings about it or anything no and then uh dragon challenge slash dueling dragons ah see i didn't get to ride that one i didn't ride dueling dragons but i did ride dragon challenge and mm -hmm. i rode it one time i rode the blue side um this was probably the last couple of years it was open and I, it was fun but i didn't again like you could already feel the life had been taken out of the ride it, it just was kind of i don't know i don't really have many memories of it anyways mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. dueling dragons in its heyday with when they actually dueled mm -hmm. i've heard you know it was, it was awesome but we'll probably yeah. talk about some of these in the next episode oh yes definitely yes. If you haven't done so already, make sure you find us on Twitter and Instagram and follow us there at Airtime Misfits. We mm -hmm. are uh, also we have a website with stuff for sale at airtimemisfits.com. Leave a like on this uh, podcast. If you're able to leave a comment and let us know some of your favorite defunct coasters. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you listening. Be sure to check out some of our older episodes. They're all pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty solid. Pretty good. Pretty solid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for listening and stay tuned for part two of our favorite fun coasters that we did not get to ride. The ones we want to ride the most. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace.